Right, good morning everyone. Thanks for being here for the, it's actually, we, we have an AGM as well of the uh, all party parliamentary group for single parent families. And uh, this is a group that was set up in the last parliament because we realised, I mean, people, we often say that if you only have legislators who are sort of grey haired men in grey suits, and you know, some of my best friends are grey haired men in grey suits. Um, but, you know, if there's only one type of person making the decisions, then decisions end up not being inclusive. And, and if it's only, you know, people who assume everyone is a happy nuclear family, then single parent families, which are a huge, I think Victoria will be able to tell us the exact numbers, but, you know, they're not uh, outlandish anymore. It's, it's fairly normal. It's two million, yes. Two million, right, there we go. So just that policymakers do bear this in mind when... Um, making policies. Um, so today we're talking about the cost of living crisis that everyone is aware of. Ah, oh, Rosie's here as well. Fab. So all of us have this in our Apologies inbox. for being late. No, that's have okay. I anything important? No, well, the AGM. Um, but look, both of you are happy to be members, unnamed officers yeah. or something even. Fab. I'll, I'll do whatever you want, yeah. Thanks, Rosie. In fact, we were very Tory heavy for the AGM bit. We had Michael Fabric and we had who else? Alex Stafford. We had a Lord. Anyway, look. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, that's good, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's, it, I mean, and the thing about these APPGs is they are genuinely cross party and they're the fun groups because in Parliament, the select committees, they can grill you, they can subpoena you. You have to give evidence it's a bit like going to court whereas these are the fun ones where we tease out issues and talk about interests so there's a lot and of Jack Monroe to our things yes exactly so once again big shout out is that making a noise shall I mute it yeah uh, Jack Monroe on Monday night we're having an event bring all your books if you want any Jack Monroe oh, books signed um fab okay so today we are talking about the cost of living crisis something that's very uppermost in all our minds that's been exacerbated actually by the war in ukraine apparently not only oil and gas prices but grain and bread prices set to rise because ukraine is the bread basket of europe so um very lucky to have um victoria benson who is the ceo of gingerbread um, as well as Oliver Crondon from CPAG, the Child Poverty Action Group. So I think we do have a lot of participants we can't see. This is just the top table of important people that we can see. Um, so both of you two, do you want to kick off with um, 10 minutes each? I think it's, we're going to do. And then we've got an actual single parent who, hang on, where sh is it she, I'm guessing? Victoria, is she waiting in the wings or? Um, I think it's a recording, isn't it, Henry? Yes, it is. Ah, okay, right. So then we'll play the video of that person and then we'll um, open for discussion and we'll finish by 11. Yeah, it's already 10.18. So look, let's start off with Victoria Benson, CEO of the oldest single parent charity in the world. I think it started over 50 years ago. Victoria. Thank you. Thanks, Rupa. Um, I'm really pleased to speak to you today about the rising cost of living and the impact this is having on single parents. Um, we're hearing every day from single parents who are really concerned about the soaring costs of food and fuel and how they're going to stretch already really tight budgets even further. And our helplines see more calls than ever before from people who are really worried about providing for themselves and their families. And this is set to get even worse. The reality for many single parents, especially those on low incomes, is that they do not know how they will absorb the surging costs of essentials in April. And we can't even start to imagine what's going to happen after the next price rise later in the year and what the impact of the war in Ukraine is going to be. But this is nothing new because single parents' budgets were already at breaking point. Years of low wages, benefit cuts and freezes and the lowest rate of child benefit for 20 years have all contributed to hitting those with the least the hardest. Pre-pandemic, single parent households had the highest rates of income spending and financial wealth poverty, and they were twice as likely to be in poverty as couple families. And that was pre-pandemic. The last two years have had a de devastating impact on single parent households. Gingerbread research published last year found that average debts for single parent households had increased by 13% or 600 pounds per family. And we know that many single parents lost their jobs too. 
As a result, the rising cost of living is part of a perfect storm that will push many single parents and their children further into poverty. The prices of all essentials are rising at an eye-watering rate. The energy price cap is due to go up by just under £700, and the Resolution Foundation has said that the poorest households will see their energy spend rise at proportionally three times the rate of richer households. This is likely to disproportionately impact single parent families more than most other family types, and single parents are incredibly worried about how they will meet these spiralling costs. A major part of the problem is that while prices are rising, income from earnings and benefits aren't keeping pace. Three quarters of single parents are now on universal credit, but benefits are due to increase by just 3% in April, far short of the rate of inflation, which is projected to be 7% in the spring. This means that the majority of single parent families in the UK are facing a real terms cut to the amount they will have coming in at a time when they need st stable income more than ever. Alongside this, Gingerbread Research published last week has found that single parents are struggling to find work that is flexible and pays enough. There is a big shortage of part-time work, which single parents need in order to juggle their caring responsibilities. And on, often increasing their hours doesn't increase their take home pay because of the extortionate costs of childcare. At Gingerbread, we've heard from many single parents who are deeply concerned about what the cost of living rise will mean for them and their families. One parent told us, single parents have always been in this position where it's been a dangerous balancing act and something you can never stay on top of. With living costs going up even more, I mean, it's incredibly scary. So what needs to change? I know I've painted a particularly bleak picture of single parent families facing this cost of living crisis, but this is a crisis that can and should be it partly, partly mitigated for the UK's poorest families. We would like to see the government do more to support single parents and their children. Namely, firstly, the government must uprate benefits in line with inflation to ensure families who have already lost out because of the cut to the £20 uplift do not face another real terms cut of absolutely essential economic support. There must be greater support for families meeting the energy costs they are facing, partic particularly through existing schemes like the Warm Home Discount Scheme. And finally, there must be a longer term review of minimum income, similar to the Minimum Wage Commission, to ensure that families don't fall further behind by ensuring that our social security system adequately supports parents in meeting their living costs. We want to see the end of this huge mismatch between what single parent families have and what they need just to get by. This isn't about luxuries, it's about parents and families being forced to make the choice between turning the heating on or putting food on the table. I'll leave you with the words of one single parent we spoke to about how they are being impacted by the cost of living crisis. My children don't ever go without, but I will. This week I've only eaten one cheese sandwich in three days. I don't eat regularly. I use free sites for clothes, shoes and to replace furniture. I don't use heating in my bedroom. I don't smoke or drink. I don't have a social life. But this way my kids have everything that they need and they don't go without. Thank you. Thanks ever so much, Victoria. Right, so um, we're going to go over to Oliver Crondon from CPAG, the Child Poverty Action Group. Um, thanks, Oliver. Do you, do you need to share screen facility with the PowerPoint? Yes. Ah, right, it's working. <laughs> Henry's, Henry's on it. Thank you very much, Rupa. And thank you for, uh, to Gingerbread for having me here today to speak at this important event. Um, next slide, please, Henry. Um, so as Victoria has highlighted, uh, this crisis comes after an unequal pandemic that in turn came after an extremely challenging decade for low-income families. We've seen successive years of below inflation increases to benefits that left many households with little or no financial resilience as the pandemic hit. In 2019, just before the pandemic, the ONS data showed that one in three parent families receiving benefits had no savings to fall back on. And we know the economic pain of the pandemic was concentrated among lower income households, further eroding their financial resilience and pushing many into or further into debt, as Gingerbread's research highlights. Obviously, there's never a good time for rising prices, but with so many budgets on the brink, this is an extremely worrying time to see inflation hitting a 30 year high. And it will undoubtedly be the cause of sleepless nights across the country. 
At the centre of the current crisis is soaring energy bills, set to increase by 54% in just a few weeks. This means an additional £60 a month for families with children in poverty on average, although some will face much higher increases. Next slide, please. While everyone will feel the pinch of uh, rising energy bills, families in poverty will be hardest hit because they spend so much more of their income on energy. After the increase in bills in a few weeks, families with children in poverty face spending three times the share of their income on energy compared to better off families. This means that a single parent family in poverty will have to spend one in every four pounds of their disposable income after housing costs to continue using the same amount of energy. And there'll be additional pressures besides storing energy bills as well. We know that transport, childcare and supermarket prices are all increasing at a worrying rate. Next slide, please. With prices rising significantly faster than benefits are due to be increased by, millions of families across the country are heading for a real terms cut to their income. In April, benefits will be increased by 3.1%. Before the invasion of Ukraine, the Bank of England predicted that prices would have risen at over twice that rate by April. The budgets of households in poverty will be stretched even further. The real value of universal credit for families with children, for example, will fall by around £570 on average. To put that into perspective, £570 a year is equivalent to around three months of energy bills for a family with children living in poverty. And that's after energy bills increase in April, a really significant sum of money. If, as many fear, inflation increases beyond the Bank of England's projection, then the loss will be even greater. And there's also 180,000 families subject to the benefit cap who will not even see that 3% rise in April. They will suffer an even greater fall in the real value of their benefits. The cap limits the amount of social security some families receive, a, a limit that's been in place uh, frozen since 2016 and disproportionately affects single parent families. Next slide, please. There are many different ways to look at the scale of the challenge that uh, low income families are facing this year. And unfortunately, they all paint the same picture. This slide shows how far out of work single parent families are from affording the minimum goods and services the public think are required for a decent life. We compare 2009, just after this minimum income standard methodology was developed, to an estimate for April 2022. We see a long run decline in living standards for out of work families over the last decade. The, de the decline is particularly steep for single parent families. In 2009, an out-of-work lone parent family could afford two-thirds of the goods and services required for minimally acceptable standard of living. In April 22, they face being able to afford just over half of the required goods and services. Our estimate assumes these families receive the council tax rebates in a few weeks and that inflation is at the conservative end of their estimates for April. Next slide, please. With no room left in the budgets of so many, more families across the UK will likely be forced into a position of making extremely difficult choices. These are some quotes from participants of COVID Realities, a joint project run by the University of York, University of Birmingham and CPAG, which is funded by Nuffield Foundation. The project documents the experiences of low income families throughout the pandemic. Aurora says that there's simply nothing left to cut back in their budget and to reduce cost means going without heating. Eric says, the money I receive has not increased in several years, so an increasing broadband bill will mean even less food in the cupboard and a really tough time during the winter, as I will not be able to afford the cost of heating our home, even for a short period of time each day. Alex wrote in their journal, lying in bed, tummy rumbling, started to wait and see if daughter leaves food on plates and finish it off to save money. We finished her plate tonight. These are the experiences of families before energy bills soar in just a few weeks and before we see inflation peak. 
organisations working directly with families are already documenting a worrying increase in families needing crisis support. And without further intervention, this will only get worse as prices and bills increase even further. Next slide, please. It's difficult to overstate the scale of the financial difficulty that millions of families in the UK face this year. We're already seeing worrying predictions of further significant increases in energy bills in October, meaning families will face this coming winter in a significantly worse position and with very serious consequences for the ability of households to heat their homes and afford the essentials. It's clear that more needs to be done to support families with children in poverty through this crisis. The council tax rebate alone won't cover the increase in energy bills, let alone rising prices across the board. At the beginning of the year, CPAG published a joint letter with 40 organisations calling for benefits to be increased in April in line with inflation to mitigate some of the worst impacts of this crisis. Much more will be needed so that levels of support reflect what people actually need to get by, but this must be the first step for the Chancellor to take in the spring statement to support families with children in poverty throughout the crisis. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, plenty of food for thought there. Um, and we've been joined also with by Antonia, Antonia Arcee, who's um, in the Times today. I was just reading about your, oh, hang on. What's happened to my camera? Sorry. Yeah, about your rugby prowess as well as everything else. Shadow Northern Ireland Minister, world class sports person, all that. Brilliant. Look, a lot of things there. Um, so hang on, the chat, the, yeah, should we throw it open? Which, um, well, hang on, shall I ask one first of all to get it running and then everyone else chuck in questions? I think the wider public is in, in some sort of parallel universe. We can't see them. I think just the screen I can see is nine people who are MPs and speakers. I think someone's put something in. Oh, Rosie is still here as well. Sorry, can I just also flag our event on the 21st? Evening of the 21st, Monday night, in the Churchill room. Hope we have a big turnout of people. Um, if you email Henry from Gingerbread, he'll also send joining instructions for that. We're celebrating Day of the Single Parent Family in Parliament. But anyway, um, hang on, there is one thing in the chat. How do I get that? Ah, yes, can you make a... Oh, sorry. Oh, we have a video first, sorry. Sorry, the okay. So we have so we've had the experts. We've had Victoria Benson, CEO of Gingerbread. We've had Oliver Crondon from the Child Poverty Action Group. We're having our real life single parent, although they're not live. They're a video. So Henry, are you doing the tech for this? Right. So we've got a testimony from an actual, yeah, single mum. I think. Here we go. So Ao. Yeah. So. The, obviously, you know, everything's gone up recently um, in the past couple of months. Um, everything from gas and electricity, food bills, everything. Um, I don't know, I think we're seeing it a lot more now because obviously there's been, I don't know, it's not a fuel crisis, but, you know, the, the cost of fuel has gone up, which means that, you know, people like myself who, unfortunately, I have a meter, so I have a, a pay-as-you-go meter which means that it's running down a lot more quicker. Um, obviously, we're still in the colder um, months. I would say I would say colder season, but it's always cold in England, but we're in the colder months. Um, and, you know, I can't, like at the moment, I've got a hot water bottle because I'm cold and I don't want to put the heating on and waste the gas, which I know that I need for when my daughter comes home from school. The food bill, God, it's gone, like, it's with it even little is, you know the price are going up and it's not like drastically high but you know what i would normally get for 30 pound food shop is has reduced a little bit um because the price the price of um the cost of living has gone up a little bit more my daughter also also goes to school outside of our borough so she doesn't go to school in our borough which means that i normally drive to take her to school um but with you know the cost of petrol like skyrocketing um, I've actually started, we, we take a bus now, um, so it takes longer um, to get to school. It also takes longer for me to get back to work as well, which is not ideal, um, especially when you're a lone parent and you're working. Um, you, you don't you don't want to come across as, you know, you're taking the mickey because you're, you know, you're take you're coming to work an extra half an hour later now. Um, but luckily I work in an organisation, 
organization where my, my boss is quite understanding um, and I can make up the hours, so it, that's fine. I guess compared to other people, I'm probably on the luckier side of things. You know, um, I've had a friend that's just been hit with a 5K debt of, um, from, from her electricity bill. Um, I don't actually think it's you know it's it's unfortunate because she's got a two-year-old and she's also on a meter and you know she's struggling to even have electric um on a in her home and we're you know we're not quite there yet I've, I've gone into my emergency gas a few times and my emergency electric a few times um where she doesn't even have that option anymore I guess working parents always get you know when you are working it's always oh well you're working you don't need the support when realistically they we, we do need the support as well brilliant really vivid testimony there it is, i think it is it's harder for single parents especially i i don't know i i feel a type of way saying single parents but i also think it's it's more much more difficult for lone parents because it is literally just you and your child um it's just me and my daughter so you know when it comes to i need to buy her clothes i need to buy her you know they grow out of the uniform so quickly then you've got you know um the gas bills the electric bill she's she's cold you've got to put the heating on she's hot you've got to turn it off she she you know she wants to watch tv or she wants to be on her tablet or she wants to do something that's using the electricity you're like oh my god or you know she wants to go out and see her friends but you know it's not an it's not an easy journey you know she wants to see her grandparents my dad lives an hour away by driving so you know do we then take a three hour public transport or do we drive for an hour like you know how you know what what is the best solution to that um i think single parents they struggle a lot more because it's just one income and unfortunately on one income it's not enough um you know i know people will say oh well they get benefits they get benefits but the benefits doesn't really stretch that far um when you're working you get deductions so you know yes you could be entitled to a certain amount of money but once they've taken their deductions from your earnings it's really nothing um and i think that's unfair because people are struggling you know pe when you look at um work in poverty like i think it i can't remember the exact stat but i feel like it's between 60 and 8 60 and 80 percent of um people in work in poverty are single parents and that's really unfair because the the media and public perception is that single parents don't work we just stay at home we're, we're buying louis vuitton you know we're just going clubbing and getting botox and bum fillers or whatever else people think that single parents are doing and, and that's not true like single parents work so damn hard and you know it, it's just not enough it, it's not enough and there's not enough support mp saying single parents or single women are the cause of like all the destruction in society and whatnot not and and saying that we failed our kids with really it's it's um it's the government failing us you know like it's it's not hard to just support people but when i look at you know how we have to fight as single parents just for our voices to be heard it's it's not a, it's not a great proportion and you know it's always oh well just work harder you know how much harder do you want people to work there's so much that you can do in the day like you know i i worked you know and i worked full time and my daughter went to nursery and that was the most hellish three years four years of, of our lives because we were just in constant debt we were just chasing our tail there'd be times there'd be no food in the house you know my daughter would be hungry and i'd have to just go and visit a friend and be like oh hi i'm coming to see you and i wouldn't say oh, i'm coming to see you because my daughter needs to be fed i'd just be taking her there because i know they're going to feed her you know you, you do things like that and and people don't really people don't really understand that you know that's not that's not a way to live and i'm glad that she doesn't remember it you know that's that's one thing i'm happy about but i wouldn't do it again you know i i, I couldn't do it again I, I don't think i survive it again yeah i would echo that enormous thanks to ao it's do we know she's is she one of the people i don't know if she's on the call at all but um no really interesting and a lot of it things about how the differential electricity meters if you're having to charge it on a card or stick coins in i think the old-fashioned way of it but 
people on that sort of tariff are it's an even more punitive thing and there are people likely to be at the margins of society right any questions anyone wants to throw in on any of that so we've had the statistical presentation from Oliver we've had the context from Victoria and then the real life stuff about you know um yeah what to do when your kids are hungry and you end up at your mum's or whatever from AO um Anyone want to? Tonya, yes. Yeah, cheers. Um, thanks uh, both and, and, and uh, just really frustrating because I, I'm the co-chair of the uh, APPG on financial resilience and, and uh, you know, we've had a session, the last session we had as well with Gingerbread speaking and, and uh, there's a lot of great work going on but I'm just really concerned over heating bills going up. I, I can't even begin just to see my own, uh, you know, double uh, literally, I, uh, it, when I was not doing this job, I just don't know how I would cope. Genuinely, if it would, uh, and I, and I just wanted to know we can. I, and also, sorry, I've moved flat recently and had to try to get hold of my provider, and you can't get through. So one, if if you're having problems with being able to pay your bill, it's very difficult to get through. Two, I just don't know how people, particularly single parents, can actually afford to have an increase in any bill let alone it being a, you know a doubling potentially of, of of your heating bill and you know you're going to put eating before heating this is a crisis situation I, I can't I just don't I mean oh, sorry I'm not really getting my words out here because I can't see unless there is drastic government intervention how the hell this is going to how people are going to be able to pay their bills how can we support them i, I just I, I feel quite desperate and i'm the politician so i just wanted to say thank you for all the great work that you're doing a gingerbread and, and, and with you oliver um but you know specifically um what more can we do as politicians um because i don't want to scare people but i just you know when those emails are just drop in into your inbox about your prices going up i've just seen somebody pop something in the chat um uh, you know yeah we've we, we've got to do something and we've got to do it quick and i'm hoping there'll be something in the spring statement to help next week but you know who knows what it will be because i think there's more than just one or two things that need doing there's a catalogue of things that need addressing you um so please you know let, let us know when we can push um <clears throat> next week and work with our shadow treasury team Sorry, Rupert, I was going on a bit. <laughs> no, no, it was brilliant. No, thank you. And and again, this uh, Russia-Ukraine war seems to have made things worse, right? Because we're pulling out of, we've been over-reliant on them for too long. But then this very abrupt thing means that what was already a crisis because of the crude oil barrel price or something is getting even worse, right? Um, yeah, I don't know who wants to take those. Should we take a couple? We've got a couple in the chat as well. So... Um, oh, I'm sorry, it's okay to circulate the slides, I hope, to everyone. Henry from, who's there mysteriously as Gingerbread, if you can circulate the slides or put them online somewhere where everyone can find them, that would be great. Um, Gwen Coffey also says, I'd like to, I, I'd like for the DWP to work in conjunction with energy companies, local councils, re-council tax. Yeah, my bill just landed yesterday um, and it's gone up because, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Um, where an absent parent is not paying child maintenance. Right, the last one of these we had was with the CMS. Rosie was there, weren't you? There were some really heartbreaking stories about incompetence. Um, you know, sometimes they pay the maintenance to the wrong parent or something of a man that's got several... Yeah, I think that there's a horrendous case being raised there. And in fact, we've written to the CMS since then um, I don't know if Finley or Henry knows what the status of that. We did write a quite comprehensive letter to, uh, sorry, to the minister, not the CMS as such. Um, okay, where an absent parent is not paying child maintenance. If the government does not enforce maintenance, then as AO said, we are lone parents. I feel this should be taken into account by the companies that are charging more. And as Tonya says, some of these companies that impossible to get hold of. You can't speak to a human. And some of them have gone bust. My own one 
was bulb, which was meant to be, I think it was too good to be true, 100% renewable, cheaper than everyone else. And it's gone completely under. I think actually they are sort of operating in a way, but I don't know how sustainable that is. Um, yeah, Oliver and Victoria, do you want to take any of those? What practical things Tonya was asking should we be asking? Um, there is, as she pointed out, a spring statement. Gareth, do you know any more about the spring statement? Are you a PPS these days? I can't remember. Is he still there, Gareth Bacon? Well, yes, look, I am, I am, Rupert. Um, that's why I'm on the call, actually. I'm a PPS at the DWP, so I'm listening <laughs> carefully. Uh, yeah. And I'll be feeding comments into ministers. With regards to the spring statement, statement um, a lowly PPS wouldn't know what was in the spring statement yet, I'm afraid. I, I'd like to be able to shed some light on that, but I'm afraid I can't. Well, look, if you can sort of help us um, and you get these from your constituents, you're a London MP like I am. Um, yeah, sort of put pressure on those things. Also, the two presentations did talk about the universal credit uplift. I guess at the time that was done, a lot of these things were not foreseen. We thought we were just coming out of COVID, but these sky high prices of gas and oil filling up at the pumps, heating your home. We didn't know that. Maybe there is, I don't know if there's space to have a rethink on that um because i think people did find it useful and that's an in-work benefit really isn't it um universal. yeah i mean 68 percent before the pandemic 68 percent of single parents were in work um, and 75 percent on universal credit and i think that the first step the first of many steps that could be taken is for the benefits to be increased in line with inflation um, just to enable you know just to ensure that people don't lose out by what oliver said 562 pounds a year um, and just to to enforce uh, what tonya said you know most single parents didn't have any buffer or any space in their in their um, budgets before the you know at the end of the pandemic they haven't so they don't they simply don't have the money to pay these additional costs um, and as Io said you know what you, what you used to be able to spend with thirty pounds a week in your in your food shop on it doesn't it doesn't go as far now so um, there simply isn't any leeway in people's budgets so I, th I think the first um, and most urgent step that the government could take is to increase benefits, at least by the, the rate of inflation. Yeah, I would, I would certainly echo that. And just to pick up on um, your point, Tonya, around the kind of the worry, um, I think speaking to low low income families, they're very keen to stress that this, you know, just because the the current focus of the news is on the crisis now. This is not a new crisis. Financial difficulty is not something new, um, but it will get significantly worse. Um, and yeah, certainly the, the the worry and feeling of panic that when that when that bill drops is um, is 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 very serious. Um, I think in terms of what can be done, um, certainly agree with Victoria that um, I think it's it's about pushing the government and making sure the focus is on um, lower income households and, and mitigating the worst of the impacts and um, and the consequences that will have. Um, and, you know, there still is <clears throat> time to um, increase benefits in, in, in line with inflation in April. Um, as Victoria said, there's just no room in the budgets of families to take other another real terms cut um, as prices increase at twice the rate as, as benefits will um, and that will have really serious consequences so it, it sounds like a very technical um, point but an extremely important one to uh, to push. Yeah it was interesting also from AO's um, testimony that the stigma uh, that people think single parents are responsible for all the ills of society. I mean, I, I hope that's receding. Um, and yeah, Gareth, if you can take back to the, in fact, we've got Mims Davis coming to the reception on Monday night. So I know she's keen on reversing all this as, as a single mum herself. Um, but yeah, no, I think historically, again, the, the shame of it, the Kathy Come Home film that the whole of Gingerbread was filmed up at the ashes of after that, came out um yeah no it was really interesting to hear what she said what about things like so inflation we know yeah again it was um raised that what you used to get so jack monroe has had this campaign about the smart price goods in the supermarket aisles they've all vanished sort of thing the margins 
were too low or something. That was just to attract people in, I think. And a lot of them were withdrawn. She's having some of them put back and she's having food price inflation recalculated. Um, what other practical actions could be taken around these issues of inflation to put a damper? I mean, maybe it's a big macroeconomic question. Um, right, okay, someone else has put one in the chat. More single parents I know are supporting their adult children who can't afford to live independently and still studying. Don't get sufficient student finance to manage their course and need single parents to support them as well. Yeah, I'm one of those parents and want to support my son as soon as he will earn a good salary after the second year MSc. After the two years, sorry, he's doing a two year master's course, it sounds like. Um, I mean, again, I think under the Labour governments, we had something called educational maintenance allowance. That's gone. That was to support people in that in between stage sort of post compulsory education sick form type of thing. Um, yeah, anyone got any thoughts on any of those things? And we have a link now for the slides. Can we send those around everyone who came? Because the problem with these chats is that's going to disappear, isn't it? At 10 o'clock in nine minutes, that will go. If it is possible to send that round, it would be good. If not, if people can paste that somewhere. The chat and slides will all be saved. Okay, brilliant. Yes, any thoughts on student finance? Tonya, yeah. Oh, I wasn't going to talk on student finance, but I, was going to talk. <laughs> I just wanted to say, you know, I always say in about about the, you know, single parents being blamed for the, all the ills of the, you know, things that happen. I think it's really important that this group, I know that we, you know, we set this up a few years ago now, Rupert, but it's really, and, and I remember having a conversation with you and I just think a little bit of background, you know, we was, we, when we had joined Parliament in 2017 and spoke to you saying, oh, look, there's, there's quite a few of us, we're, we're single mums, you know, can we do something? And you had this brilliant idea to set this group up. And I, I think, you know, we're still single parents. I mean, our, our children are getting a little bit older now, but um, I think it's just a really important message to, to, you know, to break down those barriers, to say it's, it's okay. You know, it, it, it there's, we, you know, we stand with you. We know what it's like. We've, we've had our own difficulties and hardships and, and we, we do get it. So I just wanted that message, really. It's, it's okay for me and my ivory tower now as an MP, but that's why this means so much to me. And, uh, and, and I know that Rupert and particularly um, Rosie feel, you know, you both feel exactly the same. So it was just to say to everybody, this hurts now more than ever because seeing what is happening is just like I, like I said earlier, it's just heartbreaking, Rupert. And as for student finance, yeah, I, I mean, just to add my 10 pennies, yeah, I, I agree that needs, something needs to be done. And the, 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 it's just the worry of having that student finance as well, you know, uh, and having to pay it back when you're over 40 years now, not over 30 years it's going to be, because of changing the, changing the terms and conditions of it. I think that will put off a lot of young, people to go on to further education because they'll have that fear as well so I just think every so I'm not very really cheery am I <laughs> so, but just to say you know uh yeah it, it's it's something that needs addressing as well and and it's great that Gareth is on the call as PPS DWP that's great he's a you know and cross-party working is how we make change happen yeah Rosie do you want to add anything I'm so sorry, I had a maintenance man coming into my office. I'm not often here and we booked it up ages ago, but I'd agree with absolutely everything Tony said because I could still hear her. And I mean, yeah, it, it's sometimes quite difficult for her and I to be on these, um, these Zooms because we have been there and you're always remembering that you're just one election away potentially from going back to that. And hearing all those stories and reading some of the things, I, I mean, we can both relate to all of that. I mean, I've still got a key meter in my house in Canterbury and I still sometimes occasionally dream about it running out because when you've been there it's just always it's always with you and I can relate to there were some comments on the slides about people eating their children's leftovers I mean we've all done that and the idea that you know Tonya and I definitely came here to make it better for other people like ourselves so the idea that it's so much worse for them is pretty heartbreaking actually and I, I, I guess I would just ask Victoria and Oliver, what what can we do? I mean, is there a single 
way you know there's so many things to tackle the mitigation of the fuel crisis and the cost of living and the benefit cap problems is there any one thing that would make an instant difference because everything takes so long to filter through and these people are paying you know four pounds more for their shopping every week already or you know 20 pounds per month or whatever and you know what can we do basically because we'll do it you know it's easy to say i mean i don't think there is just one thing but of course the 20 pound uplift shouldn't have been removed no. um and these people just the single parent families just need more money they need more income um, you know, it's not that they're, they're not, they are doing everything they can do to, to, to budget, to save, to, to, to make it go as far as they can, but they simply don't have enough money. So that, that's, I mean, that's, that's where, what it all boils down to, really. Thank you. So we just keep... Can, sorry, can I just add to the stigma point, just to go back to that? So we did do some research last year, um, which showed that IO isn't at all alone. Lots of single parents feel that there is still a stigma um, attached to being a single parent, um, and they experience it on a day, you know, on a daily basis. Um, and you know, we see studies quite often which say that if you if a child of a single parent is more likely to have a worse outcome than a child of a couple parent, and it's because of the you know the single parenthood, I and mean, that's just not true. The reason the child of a single parent might have a, a worse outcome is because that single parent is more likely to be in poverty. So it, it's a tackling poverty that is is the answer, not um, not blaming the the, the person's um, marital or other status. That, that's just wrong. Oh, thank you for saying that. Because when I certainly when I got here, and probably Tonya, there was there were lots of groups that were set up called. Um, there was one about the adverse childhood trauma and stuff and I went along in good faith but a lot of those kind of things did sound as though they were blaming us for just being single parents and I found it quite difficult to kind of there, there are a couple of charities that basically um trying to get families to stay together none of us choose to be single parents mm. there are all kinds of reasons which people may never know about why you are not you know together with someone mm -hmm. and it's it's horrible this kind of blaming thing so I agree yeah. with that Thank you. Victoria, didn't you guys do a campaign of single parents are brilliant a few years ago? I think it was positive. Yeah, yeah, it was around our centenary in 2018. So it's, and that's really what we want Single Parents Day to be a celebration of on next week, you know, a, a celebration of resilience and strength. I think that there are, obviously there are lots of um, uh, struggles and issues that single parents are, are dealing with all the time and at the moment which we can highlight but I think there's a lot to celebrate as well and it's the strength and resilience of single parents and that's that's partly what single parents day is there to to um celebrate brilliant well let's kind of end on a positive Gareth um actually I wonder if, if Florence is still there can we turn our cameras on maybe have a sort of group shot or something and we can say we were here whoever's able to turn their camera on Oh no, Gareth. Oh, he's turned into Finley in my <laughs> order. Well, he's right. trying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. So here I am. I don't Brilliant. know if you can see me, Rupert. Um, I've literally yeah. got to go. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, the chat. So if you want to take the photo. on Monday, Gareth. Yeah. And sort of you've heard, I think people on your side are saying these same things. I don't want this to just be a Labour MP's rant, but you've, you've heard some. Uh, made notes I, I've made notes, Rupert. I'll, I'll be feeding them into ministers. Thank you. Yes, if you can. And see you next Monday, I hope. Everyone here, I hope. Right. How do we do this? Hang on. I'm doing it on a PC. I, don't, I usually do it on an iPad. How do you... Is it print screen? Yeah. Control <coughs> print screen. Right. If someone knows how to do this, Finley, if you can do this better than me. I've done control. Thank you, everyone. Look, there's a lot there to think about. Uh, I've done one says gingerbread which is Henry. Henry are you allowed to turn your camera on too? And it's Florence, I don't know she's multitasking. Um, not to worry look we've got a decent photo. Ah Florence is there yeah, yeah let's have one with Henry are you allowed to turn your camera on? No? <laughs> We're banning. Okay brilliant let's get one with everyone here. Thank you everyone. Um, and look, we'll be taking all this forward. Um, Gareth has got the ear of the ministers and of Rishi, maybe, for the statement. Give him a nod. <laughs> Lots of people are trying to get the ear of Rishi for the statement. Brill. OK, look, thanks, everyone. Um, to be continued. And Monday night, as I say, the day of the single parent will be celebrating that. Uh, really good to see you all to be continued.
Thanks, Rupa. Thanks. Okay, it's 59.